It's a, it, it is such a good word that God has for our hearts and our lives today. I've seen God move, and I'm, so, I'm, I'm confident that he's going to do it again. And he's made a way when there was no way. That's right, that's right. He specializes in making ways where there are no ways. Yeah. One step at a time. That's exactly right. And the Lord's blessed us. One of the young men that God brought into our church, and when I say young, he was young. I mean, back then, Wesley was... 13. I guess 13 and about this big. I mean, and I've watched him grow, 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 and I'm going to be looking up to him here before long. I don't know about We're that. We're almost eye to eye right now, buddy. <laughs> pretty close. Just because of my hair. Pretty good. Yeah, Just pretty my close. Hair. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. Can get a nice haircut like this and we'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Wes is going to come. I, I don't need to introduce him to our people and certainly to his friends. We love Wesley. Uh -huh. Wesley's a fine young man who lives what he believes. Yes, he He's a faithful representative of the Lord, and uh, I really believe in him. And I believe God has great things in store for us and for him. And so uh, you guys prayerfully and respectfully and uh, enthusiastically listen to Wesley today. All right? All right. Move the mic just a little bit. Where do I need to move it? Okay. In the meantime, I need a helpful youth. Donovan, can you run up into the uh, media room? There's a notepad that's red, and it's got my handwriting all over it. Would you bring it for me? Uh, Isaac probably knows where it is. There you go. Thank you, Donovan. You want this? Yeah. There you go. Appreciate it, Donovan. How are y'all? Good? Y'all been enjoying James? Been going through James? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, um... Funny story, we're going through James here, and uh, we're going through James at, at school. Also, I'm I'm in um I'm at William Carey University, and I got some friends here with me um, that stay in the same amazing and beautiful dorm. Uh, and uh, no, it's not beautiful. It, for the for those of you who are wondering, it's the only part of the campus that's not beautiful. So don't worry. Uh, still carry strong, okay? Um, what do they say? Carry Seder strong? That's what they say. We're Crusaders. I think we're changing that, though. But, um, yeah, we're going through James. So so I've gotten uh, three messages on the same passage that I'm doing all my work in. Anyways, it's, it's interesting, but I love James because it's so, it's so important that we have that in our lives. Um, and, uh, and, the devil just doesn't want us to hear it, it seems like. It seems so many people just run over James, but it's important. I'm glad we're going through it, and it's, it's been good. Um, today, I don't have any scripture on the board because I'm trying to make people uncomfortable. It wasn't intentional, um, but, but I do want to make people uncomfortable a little bit today, and so uh, prepare yourselves for that. But if you have a phone with you today, download... Bible app, whatever, or if you already have it, then pull it out and set your version to uh, CSB, because that's what I'll be out of, so it'll, it'll make it easier for you. Here we go. I got my Bible right here. I'm so prepared. Um, we're going to be out of 1 Samuel. So y'all can, can flip with me to 1 Samuel. If y'all have it bookmarked like me, then you're extra prepared. Um, we're going to be at 1 Samuel. We're going to hit all, all of 16. We're going to read all of 16. And uh, we talk about David a little bit today. And uh, so I'm going to... The title of the sermon for today is... Uh, let's see if we... Get, is putting passion in its place. Isaac's ahead of me. Putting passion in its place. And uh, so let's, let's pray before we get started. God, we're so grateful for you and, um, and all that you are for us, God. Where we cannot be, you are, um, and, and we are grateful for everything that you do. Um, thankful for this day, thankful that we can come to church this Sunday and, uh, and read your word, um, your inspired word, and, uh, and really get, get a message from it today that, that's for each, each and every one of us um, that we all need. God, I pray that you would stir in our hearts. Um, so that we would be receptive um, and that we could grow a little bit. We know, God, that 
Um, sometimes it takes a little growing pains for us to grow. And so, God, if, if that's your will, let it be done. And, uh, and we, we praise you for it, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. All right, look, we're going um, to get our exercise in today because cause um, I'm just feeling extra uncomfortable for y'all. So well, let's, let's stand up. Let's stand up and read an entire chapter out of the Bible. What about that? Oh, my goodness. oh yeah. So 1 Samuel uh, 16, all of 16. Y'all excited? You sound pumped. All right, let's, let's read it. Um, the, uh, starting in verse 1, chapter 16, 1 Samuel, right? The Lord said to Samuel, How long are you going to mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, because I have selected a king from his sons. Um, Samuel asked, How can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. I mean, that's a fair, fair worry uh, if, if your life's in danger right there. The Lord answered, take a young cow with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will let you know what you are to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate to you. Sometimes God sends us and he doesn't tell us what we're gonna do, but he tells us where to go, right? And, uh, and once, once we get there, then he'll tell us what we need to do. If, as long as we're faithful, that's a testing of our faith right there. Um, testing Samuel's faith, say, seeing if he'll go so that then God can tell him how to do, right? Uh, Samuel did what the Lord directed. He was faithful and went to Bethlehem. When the elders of the town met him, they trembled and asked, do you come in peace? In peace, he replied, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and said, Certainly the, Lord anointed, the Lord's anointed one is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or his stature because I have rejected him. God doesn't look at how you look. God doesn't have the same eyes you have. Right? Um, yeah, it's all about the heart, right? Um, because I have rejected him. Humans do not see what the Lord sees. For humans see what is visible, but the Lord sees the heart. Yeah. Jesse called Abinadab and presented him to Samuel. The Lord hasn't chosen this one either, Samuel said. Then Jesse presented uh, Shammah, but Samuel said, The Lord hasn't chosen this one either. After Jesse presented seven of his sons to him, Samuel told Jesse, The Lord hasn't chosen any of these. Samuel asked him, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse says, well, they're still the youngest, he answered. But right now, he's tending the sheep. He's just, he's just, he's out back. We got number eight out back. Samuel told Jesse, send for him. We won't sit down to eat until he gets here. So Jesse sent for him. He had beautiful eyes and a healthy, handsome appearance. He's not talking about Jesse there. He's talking about David. He's talking about the, yeah, okay. Um, just clarifying. Then the Lord said, anoint him, for he is the one. So we're, we're talking about, yay big, maybe, right? Young guy, right? Healthy, beautiful eyes. And, uh, and God said, yep, yeah, that's the king. The little one, number eight. The one that you didn't think was gonna be the king, that's the king. Um, David, this is just a little, a little fun fact. Um, that is important for later. David has many titles. At this point, he is shepherd and he is king because he's, he's not king yet, but his purpose is to be a king, right? So he is king. He's the king right now. But David comes out of one of the 12 tribes of Israel called Judah. And at this point, Judah was very ineffective and not, it, it wasn't like a, Oh, the tribe of Judah, wow. It was not very impressive to be a part of the tribe of Judah. But we know that lines down that Jesus, the true king, would come out of the tribe of Judah where we didn't expect it. Just like David, the young boy who we did not expect to be king, became the king, uh, the greatest king of Israel um, next to the one true king, Jesus, right? Um, let's see where we left off. Um, then the Lord said, anoint him, for he is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, 
in the presence of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully on David from that day forward. Didn't leave him. The Lord never left him after that. Then Samuel set out and went to Ramah. All right, y'all still standing, and, and uh, we're going to read the rest. Are y'all okay? You okay standing? Yeah, I mean, if you get tired, don't, you know, don't be afraid to sit down. I'm not going to persecute you for it. <laughs> Uh, now, now the spirit of the Lord had left Saul. So this is the current king. This is the guy who the Lord left. He's in the king's position right there. And he, the Lord left Saul. The king is without the Lord. Okay, that is important. King, no Lord right now. Because the Lord's with David. Because he's the king to come, right? Now the spirit of the Lord left Saul. And an evil spirit sent from the Lord. So we have the spirit of the Lord. Then we have the spirit from the Lord. Okay, remember those two. They're very different, very different. One's capitalized, one's not um, also. So that'll, that'll help you a little bit. Sent from the Lord, began to torment Saul. So Saul's servant said to him, you see that an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command your servants here in your presence to look for someone who knows how to play the liar. When the evil spirit from God comes on you, that person can play the liar and you will feel better. Then Saul commanded his servants just that, find me someone who plays well and bring him to me. One of the young men answered, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lyre. He's also a valiant man, a warrior, eloquent, handsome, and the Lord is with him. At this time, David is a shepherd boy. These are his, these are his titles he's got so far. He's a shepherd boy. He's a harpist, lyre, harp. He is... Um, He's valiant, right? We, we see the description here. He's valiant. Um, he's a warrior. So he's, a, he's, sling, he's this is past Goliath. He's, he's already slung his stone and all that good stuff, right? Um, handsome and the Lord is with him. The Lord is with him. That's important. The Lord is with him. The Lord is not with Saul. That's why he needs David. Saul needs David. Our enemies need us, right? Right? Just chew on that for a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. One of the young men answered, I have seen, okay, so handsome and the Lord is with him. Then Saul dispatched messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son David who is with the sheep. See, because the Lord is not with Saul. The Lord is with David. Where's David? With the sheep. So that means the Lord's with the sheep, right? You ever thought about that maybe the Lord's not in the palace. Maybe the Lord's back with David in, in the back with a sheet, back with number eight, yeah. Um, so Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a wineskin, and one young goat and sent them by his son David to Saul. When David came to Saul and entered his service, Saul loved him very much. Uh, and David became his armor bearer, new title, armor bearer. Then Saul sent word to Jesse, let David remain in my service for he has found favor with me. Whenever the spirit from God came on Saul, David would pick up his harp and play, and Saul would then be relieved, feel better, and the evil spirit would leave him. Just because the evil spirit uh, left, would, would leave him, does not mean the Lord is still with him. Uh, the Lord was not with Saul. The Lord was with David. That's why Saul liked David, right? Y'all can sit down. Um, the rest of the words are just going to be mine. Um, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for standing uh, while we, while we uh, read that. I appreciate it. Hopefully y'all are in the mood for some more talking, huh? Um, so we got David, a shepherd boy, a harpist, uh, the armor bearer, and a king. Not Saul, David, the king to come, right? So these are, these are our titles of David right now, okay? So this is, this is my, my first point that I want get to get to is that people give passion and God gives purpose. I'm gonna explain this a little bit. People give passion, and God gives purpose. We all have a purpose. Um, we have our general purpose, which is to go you there for, make disciples, um, to make Jesus known to the world, right? To build the kingdom. Once we're in the kingdom, though, once we build the body of Christ, each part of the body has its own purpose set by God, right? God gives each person a purpose. Every one of you has a purpose. Each one. Everyone. Everyone. Even if you don't feel like you do, you still have a purpose. Um, even if people don't tell you, do, you do. It doesn't matter what people tell you you have, right? Because God tells you you have a purpose. Um, and he planned it, uh, planned it ahead before you were even here, right? So people give passion, though. 
So we were put in us passion. We have, we have passion in, in our hearts. Anybody been passionate about something? It could be a person or a hobby or anything. I love music. Um, I, I've been playing music for 11, 12 years, somewhere in there, and um, playing drums and then piano and, and, uh, and then a little bit of singing, um, but we don't talk about that. Um, so, so I love music, right? I was going to go to William Carey for music. Um, this is a little background information. I was headed to William Carey with all intentions to be a music education major uh, so that I could be a, a music theory professor. How dignified does that sound? That is just... That's, that's sweet to the, to the taste. I mean, that's good. Um, but God, that wasn't my purpose, right? But sometimes our passion will lead us to our purpose. Sometimes we will get passionate about something and it may not be our purpose, but it will lead us to our purpose, right? Um, so I'm headed to William Carey as a music education major. And, um, but I'm... I'm my, my purpose is not to be a music education major. My purpose is uh, I feel called to be a pastor. I feel called to preach, to, um, to shepherd, to, to lead a congregation, right? And um, being a music theory professor doesn't really do that. Um, doesn't really work the same way. And, and I knew that I was supposed to be a pastor, but I also knew that that might, that might not work out. You know, I mean, if I, if I want to be a pastor, it might not, it might not be enough. What God, what God called me to do might not be enough for me. Isn't that silly? That's just funny when you say it out loud, isn't it? But that's what I thought. And, um, and so I was going to go get my music ed degree and, and be a professor and then pastor on the weekend. Right? And some people can do bivocational. Our pastor is bivocational, and he's good at it because he's an awesome pastor, amen? amen? Right? Yeah, he's awesome. Um, did you say amen? That's jacked up. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're so humble. You're the most humble person I know. Yeah, it is. Um, that's so good. Um, yeah. So I was headed to William Carey with my backup plan. I was getting ready to major in my backup plan. Uh, I, I'm, uh, don't do that. Don't do it. Any, the youth in here, don't, don't do that. That's a bad idea. Um, so I'm headed there, and, and this past summer, I, I went to Houston for a youth camp, and I went to um, Canada for a mission trip for 10 days. And, um, and, and I, I, I was in a place where <clears throat> all I had was God, and so he, I could really listen whenever he's the only person I have to listen to, right? It's really hard whenever we go about life and we're, we have all these voices going around us and it's hard to hear his voice. Um, well, that's why it's important to stay close to him because when you're close to somebody, you can hear him louder than everybody else. That's why we build a relationship. We can hear him. And so he can tell us to go like he told Samuel to go so that he can then tell us to do and fulfill uh, his purpose for us. So I'm headed to William Carey with my, with my backup plan of music ed, and I know y'all are so excited for me to finish this story. And, um, and, and uh, God, in that, this past summer, just put on my heart, you know, step into ministry full, fully. Put all of yourself into ministry, which is like, okay, but what if it's not enough, God? And, you know, he's not going to answer that because that's just like... I know better. Um, and, and so I, I step into it, and, uh, and it ended up being probably the best decision. Not probably. It ended up being most definitely the best decision I've ever made uh, regarding my future. And, um, and, and everything that I do just points towards the, the fact that that is what I need to be doing. Um, whether it be we're working on James in school and we're also working on it on Sunday, I take that as confirmation. Um, you, you have to have your eyes open so you can see where God's working, right? Because he, he's working here, but he's also going to tell you about it out here. And you have to be, have your eyes open so you can see that, right? 
So God's purpose for me is to be a pastor. His purpose for you may not be to be a pastor. If we had a whole lot of pastors, it would be a lonely church. <laughs> It'd be lonely in church, right? Um, it'd just be a bunch of pastors walking around uh, talking over each other. And uh, <laughs> Lord knows we don't need that. Um, I have enough trouble just sitting down on Sunday. Um, so, but God's per people give passion. So I'm passionate about music. My passion led me to William Carey. I was going to go to William Carey for music. If I wanted to be a pastor, I don't, I don't know what I would have what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go. There's so many options. Then I would have had to think about it all over. But William Carey's music program is awesome. Um, and so I was going to go there for music. Well, my passion led me to William Carey where I rediscovered my purpose, where I was reminded of my purpose. So my passion led me to my purpose. And then it's important to let your purpose become your passion. I still love music. Music's still awesome. I still play it every Sunday, right? It's very important that I use that uh, in my everyday life. But it led me to my purpose. My passion now is to preach, is to be a pastor, and it's for training into that. And so I'm use, I use that passion to direct me in the right place. See, God, God sent me. He didn't tell me why, but he sent me. Once I got there, he told me why, right? Um, so God gives us our, our purpose. God's purpose... Uh, as one, he has one purpose for everyone. That's to build the body. And just to recap here, okay? To build the body, and he has specific purposes for each part of the body. So each person is different, right? We've got uh, awesome worship leaders and, uh, and leader and um, an awesome pastor in this church, awesome youth ministers, and, and uh, maybe not the youth, but the ministers are awesome. Uh, I'm kidding. Y'all are... Y'all are Okay, and um, and we have an we have an awesome children's minister, um, an awesome young men minister, and um, we're blessed here, aren't we? Yes, we, are. we really are. Um, we got about more leaders in this church than we do members, and that's just that's a blessing in a lot of ways. It really is, because um, how can you grow if you don't have the correct leadership um, to push you in that direction? It's hard to grow as a follower. It's hard to move forward as a follower whenever there's no one in front of you, right? Um, so our God's purpose stays the same because God stays the same. See, while we fluctuate, we move around all the time, we are constantly moving, God stays the same. God is our constant. We can lean on God because he doesn't move. He's a rock. He's our firm foundation, right? He doesn't move. So we, while we move around, God does not. So our passions might move, but God's purpose never does. See, David was a king when he was a shepherd boy. Now, that doesn't really make sense because he's a, he's a boy. He can't be king. Um, he's a shepherd. Uh, he can't be king. He's just a peasant. He can't be king. God called him king. So he was king. That's so what God says is. That's just how it is. I mean, uh, what, what God says is true is the truth. Uh, and so what we say is true may be a lie unless it lines up with God's truth, right? Um, so David was a king. See, I thought I was a music uh, educator, um, but God called me a pastor. So I'm lying to myself whenever I don't claim my purpose, right? I'm lying to myself right there. Um, so we move around, our passions move, our passions will lead us forward if they're in the right path with uh, God, but God's purpose always stays the same, right? So our passions, uh, we have many passions throughout our life. Um, I used to be really into art as a young child, then it moved to music, and now I don't really do art. And then uh, from music, I do a little bit of music here and there, and then... Um, now it's really only on Sundays and sometimes Wednesdays. Um, but throughout the week, I'm working on being a pastor. So, because that's my passion now. Um, and that passion is on my purpose, so it's going to stay there. Um, that's what I'm praying for, at least, unless, you know, God steers me different. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not foreseeing that, though. Um, but it's not, not my eyes, God, but God's. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, 
our, our passions, we have many passions throughout uh, life. These passions may not be our purpose. They will lead you to it, right? Um, but don't put your passion in the wrong place. This, this gets dangerous. When we start getting passionate about the wrong thing. See, I was passionate, but I wasn't just passionate about any type of music. Any, or any, I was passionate about all music, but then that started to hone in a little bit. I started getting real passionate about, um, I like funk music. Funk music's my thing. I know y'all are like, look at this white boy up on stage. He doesn't like <laughs> funk. <laughs> He's not into funk. There is no way. I, I like funk. Um, but the people who play the funk that I listen to, they are white, so whatever. Say what you want. Um, it's probably not real funk then, I guess. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but... But, and, and then that kind of moved, and, and I, I don't really listen to much funk anymore. I really only listen to worship music now. I'm not condemning anybody out there who listens to anything that's not worship music. I just think it's good. I think it's awesome. We sing it in church. I want to sing it outside of church because um, I don't want church to stop. See, that door is not our exit of church. Uh, our door is our transfer of church. Um, so whenever you leave the church, right, you, you can't, you can't just be like, all right, man, I got, I got my Jesus for this week. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Because as soon as you walk out there, you walk into a grocery store for 10 seconds and Jesus will leave you. <laughs> Jesus, I'm, I'm telling you, you get in the line and, and somebody butts in front of you uh, before, or getting into a gas pump. This happened the other day, getting into a gas pump. Somebody swerves into the, into the gas pump before you can get there. Man, Jesus is out your mouth in five seconds, right? <laughs> right? Some of y'all are being quiet. I'm making me nervous. Um, y'all might have been the person who swerved in front of me the other day. Um, it, <laughs> Pastor Keith. And um, I saw you in your truck. <laughs> but so we can't put our, we can't, I, 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 get, I get off, but we can't, I guess that's just a pastor in me. But um, I don't know where I get that from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we, have to, we have to make sure that our passion is in the right place because if we put it in the wrong place, because there is music that is not where our passion needs to be. There is. There's music out there that is it's just not, it, it doesn't, it's not good for right here. It's not good. Um, and it, it, will, it, will te- it will tear you away. If it's not, I would argue to say that if, if something is not putting Jesus in your mouth, then you need to get it out of your life. Um. If, if, you are not, if you are not living like you should be, then you need to start taking parts out of your life that don't reflect God. Um, one of my favorite, and I use this um, in, I, I used analogies in my, uh, well, let me back up a little further. In my major uh, in, at school, we have to write a big paper, and Pastor Keith touched on it a little bit last week. Um, we write a big paper. I just and, and I use some analogies in it, and, and all of my analogies I got from Pastor Keith because he he's just so wise. And he, he's just awesome, isn't he? Come clap for him. Come on, make him feel good. He's he's turning red. He's turning red. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, so humble. Um, yet again, and I'm just building him up. Yeah. Um, but there was one analogy that I used. It was talk about purifying gold. And Pastor Keith is so forgive me for repeating him. Pastor Keith talks about uh, a a gold miner will refine gold by heating it up until the impurities rise to the top and they'll scrape away the impurities and they'll do it over and over and over and over and over until the gold miner can look down into the gold and see a reflection of himself. So would you not consider that also our responsibility to take the impurities out of our life so that God can look down into our hearts and see his? Would it, would it not make sense for us to also pull the impurities out of our life? Just as, you know, you know what, God, let me, let me save you some heating. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pull some impurities out. Let's not do this the hard way, God. <laughs> there are always going to be hard ways in life that we, we just have to deal with. Um, but, but if we can avoid it, let's do it, right? That's why we, we come here for uh, um, preventing problems in our life, not um, correcting them. But sometimes we have to correct our problems too, and that's okay. Um, as long as we get out of them, right? But we have to move forward to get out of them. 
So make sure your passion's in the right place, because if the passion's in the wrong place, then that passion will lead you away from God, and we want our passions to lead us towards our purpose, which is God, right? Our purpose is to fulfill what he has for us. Um, so if I, if I have my passion in the wrong place, if I went through with my music ed degree instead of getting my, that would not be pushing towards God's purpose. Does God's purpose still remain in my life? Yes, it's always there. It's just, I don't want to have to jump too far to get back to it, though. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get there from here instead of from over here, right? Does that make sense? Um, uh, if I need to re-explain anything, y'all just raise your hand and say rephrase. Okay? Yeah. Rephrase. Um, that's your lifeline for this week. Um, yeah, rephrase. Um, not that church is a game show. But, uh, <laughs> but is your passion... This is, a, this is a question I, w- I want you to really think about. Think about this for the rest of the message, the rest of your life, okay? This church doesn't stop here. It, it, it just keeps going out there, right? We just don't have a preacher in front of us. Um, is your passion based on your purpose or is it based on your pleasure? Is your passion based on your purpose or is it based on your pleasure? Do you like something so you do it? Or do you feel called to something so you do it? See, I might not even like being a pastor. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It's not about what I like. It's about what God has for me. I know that if I, if I like something and I go with my pleasure, now I might like being a pastor, and that's awesome if that's my pleasure. If, it becomes my, if my purpose becomes my passion, then it might become my pleasure also, right? But if our pleasure, if we, before we know our purpose, we just go with our pleasure then we, we'll be lost. We'll be lost and we'll, be, we'll, we'll have fallen away. Um, is there a way back? Yes, we're never too far gone, but, uh, but let's get over there, right? So is your passion based on your purpose or is it based on your pleasure? What are you basing your life around? Things you like or things God has? Because he has, he has great things for you. He does. If you just, and you don't know what it is, right? Samuel didn't know what he was going to find or what he was going to do. God sent him. Once he went, once he was there, brought the cow to sacrifice. Notice that he brought his sacrifice with him. He didn't bring all of his treasures that he wanted to keep forever in his life. He brought stuff that he was going to sacrifice. See, it's a sacrifice whenever God sends us. God does not send us without a sacrifice. If he, didn't, if he sent us without a sacrifice, why do we need faith? Why do we need to trust him if it's easy? Life's hard. Most good things aren't easy, right? But it's worth it because God has it, okay? Okay. So is your, is your passion based on your purpose or is it based on your pleasure? That is important for you to understand the difference. And so every day, uh, if you can, if you remember, uh, wake up and ask yourself, is my passion based on my purpose or is it based on my pleasure? Am I feeling really, really good when I, uh, and, until I go to church or when I leave church because I'm going out? I... I look forward to my week, not because it's outside of church. So don't don't get, you know, don't get offended. <laughs> Got someone up here saying that he likes being outside of church. No, because church doesn't leave. Remember, church is just it's just a transfer, not an exit sign. Um, I get really excited for my week because there are people that I don't know that will step into my life, conversations that I will have with people um, that I may have not. Uh, had the chance to have before um, that will lead me towards uh, my purpose. And that's my passion. My passion is for people to hear God. And, uh, and do I think that I'm worthy of transferring God's word into people? No, <laughs> not at all. Um, especially not now. I mean, I've, I've taken, I'm almost done with my first three classes in in school and so uh, to sit in here in front of people who have gone through it or lived lives and uh, people who are not old older right older. yeah yeah you're not old pastor keith you're just older yeah yeah 
That's, that's just for you, Billy. You're not old. You're just older than me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's hard to stand up here and talk to people who are older because it feels like maybe my word would not be credible. But it's not about what my word says whenever I'm up here, right? It's about what God's word said. And God's word says the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. It is, it is constant and it is living it is living. So um, I know uh, some of y'all are out there thinking, what is this little 19-year-old saying? I'm, I'm not going to listen to a word he says. And <laughs> I, I love you, Miss Bev. I know it's not you. I know it's not you. <laughs> God's word is living, right? And um, God called David a king. He may be calling you to be a king. He may be calling you to be the president, unless it's Donovan. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Donovan. I got to pick on you. You know I do. He might be calling you to be the president. He might call you. He might call you to be a cashier. Yeah, yeah. That might not be your passion, though, right? We know. We know, Donovan. It's okay. Um, he said he did not account money. Anybody who didn't didn't hear that, and uh, I know y'all aren't surprised. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He. Oh, you're not. <laughs> That's awful. Um, make sure your pat. If make sure your. All right, all right. Come on, come on. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. Um, his, his purpose is Donovan. We know your purpose is not to be a cashier. What? Okay. Um, make sure your passion is based on your purpose. If you hear anything today that you remember. It's make sure your passion is based on your purpose, not on your pleasure. It will save you a lot of difficulty. Will it save you from troubles in your life? No. Um, you, can call, you can follow your calling uh, all your life and still have problems, right? Anybody, anybody uh, want to say an amen to that? Because, I mean, that's, that's, that's just how it is. Life is hard. Um, but we live through it, and we have to live through it passionately for our purpose. If we live for our pleasure, then, then we lose all sight of our purpose. So our next, my next point that I want to get to y'all is um, to protect your passion. Because if, if you lose your passion, or if it's in the wrong place, it, it, it won't be good. If you lose your passion, it's, it's hard to get it back. If you lose all hope for anything, it is hard to regain hope, right? It is hard to pick up the pieces. You know, all these P words, I know y'all are like, say it, don't spray it. But um, uh, you have to, yeah. <laughs> um, you have to protect your passion because if you lose your passion, it's, it's hard to regain it and hard to pick up the pieces uh, to add some more P words in there. And... Um, so it's important that we protect it. How do we protect it? Um, there's one word that I want you to remember for protecting your passion. It's saturation. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get there, but saturation. I um. Does anybody have any matches? Yeah, no, I know, but I need matches. Anybody have any matches? No, that's okay. Um, I want to. I want to get somebody in here to come up here, but I don't know who it is. It's not going to be Donovan. Let's get, let's get Pastor Keith up here. <laughs> yeah, you got to do more standing than everyone else. You get extra exercise. I got, I got something for you that I want you to, I want you to hold, and I want you to be responsible for it. So you got, you got a lighter? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then this, this is something called lighter knot. Um, I met with Kyle a week ago, um, our youth minister, one half of our youth ministry uh, leadership, and um, awesome job in the youth. And uh, today is our youth Sunday, so we're celebrating that a little bit. And um, he told me about, I was telling him about how I wanted to preach about passion, and he told me about light or not. Now this, to y'all, what do y'all think that looks like? That looks like a, yeah, it's just a stick. Um, but it's light or not, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, but this is found in the center of the stump of a pine tree, and it is saturated with sap, pine sap, and it's highly, highly flammable. So if you, let me, let me ask you something. If you light a match, you light it, right? 
and it will go out. How quick? Quick, right? It goes out quick. But if you light light or not, because it's saturated, it never goes out. And you know, I mean, it, it'll it, eventually it'll go out when you run out of it. Yeah, right. But the idea, y'all, just stay with me, okay? It will never go out. Okay, <laughs> don't try it, but it will never go out. Um, so so it the the idea is that it is saturated, and so it won't soon go out, mm-hmm. right? And so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you here. Let's light that in. That looks good. I'm gonna let you hold it because um. That way you can be responsible if any damages. Um, yeah, it's all, all you. You got it. And um, we're just going to hold it there, I guess, until it goes out, huh? Yeah. There's not a football game today, is there? Okay, cool. It doesn't matter. Y'all, y'all are good, so we have time. You can, you can put it out whenever you, whenever you need to. Well, then, yeah, we can put it out whenever we need to because smoke and all that, and we might start hacking. Yeah, that's fine. So the idea, the flame just got bigger, right? That, were y'all watching it? I'm sure you were watching it because you got nervous about the smoke. But the flame not only just, the flame started about this big and it got about this big and, uh, and the smoke just build, built up. See, if we ignite our passion in the right place and we keep it saturated, if we keep ourselves saturated with God's spirit, right? If the Lord is with us like the Lord is with David, right, then our passion can just grow and grow and grow. And, and think, about, think about this. The fire grows, and then what else grew? The smoke, the smoke and the heat. What came off of the fire? Yeah, what came, uh, yeah, and, and all the fear in the congregation because of the fire up on stage, yeah. Um, y'all thought it was Pentecost up here. Um, <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and so, but the, what led off of it grew. <laughs> um, what led off of it grew. We had our fire, we built our fire, we saturated ourselves so that our passion would grow and our passion would grow. And, and then our, what we let off ended up growing and we felt heat and more and more heat and then there's more and more smoke that we see. And so if we go with our passion and saturate ourselves so that our passion grows in our purpose, then our heat and our effects will go off onto other people. See, our purpose, our original gen- general purpose is to make Jesus known, right, to people. That is our one uh, general purpose. We each have specific ways that we do it. And our one general purpose is to make Jesus known to the world and make disciples of them, not just to stop after spreading, but to continue to make disciples. Um, notice that Paul in his mission trips, he would, he would go to places and, and teach them about Jesus, but then he wouldn't stop there. He'd send Timothy or Titus or Apollos or whoever to be over the church to make disciples. You don't, see, you don't stop just by telling people about it. Um, you stop when you're dead after you get done leading them with it. Um, so what we let off is very important. Are we, are we going to just live as a, a, even if you have the light or not, you might saturate yourself, but if you're not saturate yourself and you don't light yourself and you don't have that passion and you're just saturated, you're still not doing anything. James tells us, and I'm sure we'll get into it soon, uh, in, in coming weeks that faith without works is dead. See, it's great to have faith. But if we don't use our faith and show people our faith and spread our faith and make disciples with our faith, it's useless. It's dead. And so we need to light ourselves, our passion, and saturate ourselves before we can do that. Learn about the Spirit. Learn, Get close to God. Have you thought about... um, I I just, I want to use some money. Let's use Billy. Billy, can you stand up for me real quick? Okay. Um, well, that'll work too. See, if I'm, if, if it, it, let's say, now Billy, I don't want you to get a God complex here, but let's just say that you are the spirit. Let's say that you are the Lord right now, okay? Now, I know you're not worried. If you strike him down, I'm about to step back just in case you get lightning strike, okay? Uh, anybody who wants to change seats, just, just be warned. Um, if I'm over here, if I'm over here and I'm, and I want to hear God, I want to see what God's seeing for, for my life, it's going to be really, really hard to see his perspective on it. It's going to be really hard to see his perspective on my purpose because my passion 
is so far away. If I get passionate about God and I start getting closer to him and building a relationship with him and saturating myself with his spirit and grow closer to him, then I can get so close to him that I'm seeing That's right. with his vision. So get close to God so that you can see his purpose for your life. But you're not going to see your purpose for your life unless you see his perspective for your life, right? So if you get close to God, you can see where he sees. You want to know what's going on in your life. You want to see the, and you can sit down, Billy, I appreciate you. If you want to see what's going on in your life, you want to see the big picture of your life, you want to see it through God's perspective. How do you see it through God's perspective? How do you see your purpose through his perspective? You grow your passion through him and not your pleasure. You grow your passion towards him and you get close to him, build your relationship with him, saturate yourself with him, and you will see his perspective. Have, has anybody thought about it like that? I, when you grow close to God, you're getting close to him. My mom always uh, told me to pray to, God, don't let my feet touch the ground so I can, I can see what you have for me. Don't let my feet touch the ground, God. Has anybody thought about praying that they would get close to God so they could see in his eyes? Our eyes, it says in 1 Samuel 16 that our eyes are not God's eyes. We don't see like God sees, but if we grow closer and closer and closer to God, then we can see through his eyes, see through his perspective, and we will see our purpose. But we can't see it till we get there. It won't happen till we get there. You're gonna be real confused, yeah, if you're just way over there and asking God, hey God, what, what do you see? What, what do you see for my life? We'll grow close to him and, and he'll show you. So many people wait for God to tell them what, what he's got for them. Why don't you grow close so he can show you what he's got for you? We're always waiting for God to tell us stuff. What if he's going to show us stuff? Joshua, the, the river of Jordan, or the, it didn't, the Jordan River did not split until he what? Put his foot in it, till he stepped in. So I challenge you, whenever you're leaving the, uh, this building, I challenge you to think about it like you're stepping your foot into the river. Stepping your foot, because this, this is just our base. But Freedom River's out there. Freedom River is not in here. This is just a people in a, in, in a building. Our ministry's out there. So whenever you walk out today, step your foot in your purpose, and that is to spread uh, spread his name and to let people see the light that you are. So you grow closer to God and you step out there because God, God is in our church. I believe that with everything in me. I love my church. Um, I know y'all do too. And uh, I see great things for the church and, and uh, I don't plan on stopping until uh, the things I see uh, go through. But, but where God is working is out there. God is going to show you things out there. You can saturate yourself and build your relationship and, and everything, but if you're not working in it out there, then you're not gonna see it. So everyone's trying to grow closer to God, right? You're not gonna do that in here. This is where you get inspired to do it out there, not, not to do it with everyone else in here. Grow closer to God. Look at it through his perspective. Find your passion through his eyes. Um, and it may take messages like this, and, um, uh, and I'm blessed to say people like me to remind you, it, it, remind you that you have a purpose so that you can reignite your passion. You need to know your purpose so that you can reignite your passion. Um, because I, I feel like a lot of people in here may have had passion in their life. A lot of y'all look like y'all have lived life a little bit. You might have lost your passion in there. But it's not too late. I don't think it's too late at all. Um, and so I'm, I, want you to, I want to remind you that you have a purpose so that you can go out and reignite your passion in your purpose. So would you do that for me? Ask your, wake, up your, wake up in the morning, ask yourself, is my, purpose, or is my passion based on my purpose or is it based on my pleasure? 
Um, and how am I going to build my passion in, in, into my purpose? I need to grow closer to God and find my perspective um, for my purpose, find his perspective for my purpose. Um, so I, I want to wrap up in a little bit, and, and I'm, I'm not going to pray just yet. I'd, I'd like to pray at the end. Um, but first, we have a very, very, very special guest. Um, who's over to the side shaking his head. We have uh, Kyle, the guy who I met with, um, about this message. His, he's going to come up and give his testimony and talk to us a little bit about um, his found purpose and his passion in it. Um, so y'all welcome Kyle up, to, up here so he can give his testimony. Keep clapping. He's not done walking. Keep on. Keep on. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Job. Thank you. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's almost like this was God's plan, right? To have this message and to have the youth come up and do what they're doing and have Pastor Tanya say what she says and what Pastor Keith say what he says and then Wesley say what he says. Um, that's kind of the root of like where I got my start is that <clears throat> what I stood on when I first became a Christian, like the most interesting thing that I found is that God's plan, what he's doing in your life, your life, and my life, it's just, it's crazy. It's just always relevant. And so if, if anybody else is nervous, please let me know so we can be together in all this. Uh, I, I just, I found that that was like one of the most interesting points to hold on to because when, when I was first kind of shown, hey, come to church. God's got something for you. We're praying for you. We want you to become a Christian. We want you to be saved. We want you to dwell in the house of the Lord. I'll, I'll be there in a minute. I got good things to, to do. Y'all just, I know the church has been there for a while. Just hang on. I'll catch up with you eventually. I'll be there. And that was me. It's like I, ha I had better things to do. My purpose was to go out and have fun and look out for me. Uh, <laughs> my passion was going out and having fun and looking out for me. And my purpose and passion interfered with what God's plan was, but him being who he is, he, he moves stubborn, short, stubby mountains and says, get on up, let's go, get to church. My beautiful, wonderful, God-fearing and loving wife is like, that's where a lot of my passion comes from. She's a shining example of who I should have been, you know? I'd be 3,000 miles away, and she's like, I'm praying for you. And I'm like, well, that's cool. I don't know what that means, but I appreciate it. Whatever. Thanks. See you later. You know? And then we'd go out, and we'd do our thing, and we'd get shot. And I'm like, oh, I'm really, I'm really glad you prayed for me there. <laughs> Whew. And then we make it home, and everybody's like, wow, you're, you're alive. And I'm like, well, I mean, I, I wasn't really in all that much danger, you know? No big deal. And I'm thinking, thank you, Lord, for bringing me home. And I was real shy about opening up to Christianity. I was afraid of being judged. I was afraid of my friends calling me a loser and a, a thumper and all this other stuff. But, you know, what I was missing out on was the joy of the Lord, and I didn't even know it. I was missing out on all of that. And we had a, a guy that was our, our crew leader way back when, and he used to always come out. He was this smiling, bubbly, happy person. <laughs> all right, guys, time to get to work. And we're like, what are you so cheery about? Like, it's 7 o'clock in the morning. It's freezing. We haven't even had coffee yet. He's like, God is good. And I'm like, not for me, you know. I'm glad he's with you. And then we'd give him a hard time. We'd give him such a hard time. I feel like even now I, I look back, and I'm like, gosh, I was a bad person. But his passion was to show Christ to other people. It really was. You know, and through all the stones that we threw at this guy, he stood there like, all right, guys, let's go. And he was strong. And that was probably one of the first times that I saw that in somebody. I'm like, man, we threw some heavy dirt at this guy. And he stood there and took it. I'm like, I, <laughs> I would have caved a long time ago. But God kept putting these people in my life. And... It was always what I needed. It was always relevant. It was always the example that I needed to see. 
you know, when I when I got in, I got myself in deep trouble and I had no shovel. And I pull up in front of a church. I'm like, why am I parked here? So I would call my mayor. And she would just answer the phone. She, oh, my sweetheart. God loves you so much. I'm like, why? Because he had a plan for me and I didn't even know it. I didn't see it. And I'm grateful for that because if I could see that far into the future, maybe I would have done something stupid with it. I don't know. And, and I'm grateful that even now, sometimes I look and I think like, I'm thankful to be able to follow in faith what God has going for me. I'm thankful for that because I would probably mess it up. It took me a really long time to come around because I was, like I said, I was really extremely stubborn. I was stubborn. I, I liked what I was doing. I liked my ways. I didn't want to miss out on fun. I didn't want to miss out on life. And uh, so when we got stationed in um, just north of North Carolina, my base shared the border, North Carolina and Virginia, Dion says, hey, we need to go to church. I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm good. She's like, come on, we need to go to church. And she kept encouraging me. Okay, happy wife, happy life, I'll go. Let's go. And when we got there, I mean, no kidding. Like, I was as, as stubborn as a mule. And we got to church. I'm like, okay, 10, 30, 11, 11, 11 let's go. Time to go. And we got invited that night to go to the pastor's house and have dinner and get to meet everybody. And I'm like, go figure. I'm invited to his house. It's like the last thing I want to do. Football's on, you know, busy, busy. We get there, and then I'm telling her on the way into the door, I'm like, I hope he doesn't say something sideways to me. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> That's just how I was sour. That's how I felt. Uh, see, part of my history is that my Christian experience was with people that were a little overboard, you know, and it, it, it actually pushed me away, and I, and I had a lot of trouble with that. You know, when you get pinned up against the wall in the hallway, the Lord is your Savior! He, you're going to need him in a minute. <laughs> Do you believe in God? You're going to need him in a minute. And I was like, yes, yes. And I would say whatever I needed to say so that I could get out of that situation, but I always felt kind of pushed away by that. You know, when I was nine, I watched a woman shake and fall to the floor and like, somebody call an ambulance. She looks like she needs help. And everybody's like, look what, the, look what God can do. And I'm like, don't let him do it to me. Please. Can we go to the beach now? That was my experience. That's what I struggled with. I didn't have a whole lot of good shining examples. And the older I got, the more, the more I understood things, the more I realized what people were trying to do for me you know, with God's help and what they wanted for me. Uh, and, and so I decided that when we went to the pastor's house that night that I would attempt to have an open mind, you know, because it wasn't, it wasn't just for her. And I knew that because all of these people in my life were telling me, like, I need God. Okay. All right. So we listened and we went in there and I sat down. I'm like, listen, he's like, who are you? I'm like, I'm Kyle. I just want to let you know that you're going to need to prove to me. Uh, I, I, I'm going to take a lot of convincing. It, it takes a lot. Just being open and honest and telling you where I stand. I haven't seen a lot of things that have showed me that I need to believe in God. I mean, I've had some close calls that, I mean, if, if he's real, I could really use his help. But just the way I feel, I don't. I don't know what to tell you. I, I need some, something tangible. And he just smiled at me. I'm like, well, he, he thinks I'm an idiot. He's like, I totally get that. I'm like, wow. He's like, God is going to come to you in a way that only you are going to be able to understand. In your time, in his time. He's going to come to you in a way that couldn't be interpreted any other way. And he said, and that's not for me to say. I can't stand up right now and tell you that the Lord needs to fill you up and rise you up out of your seat and bring you to your knees and have you begging for forgiveness, which, I mean, some people experience that. 
um, mine, mine was very different. It was kind of like a, a long-term kind of thing. But it was, it was almost like reading a really, really good book because we'd come to church and we'd sit in the chairs and, you know, Pastor Dan had a lot more hair. Sorry, Pastor, but he was big, tall, big. <laughs> he always, he, I always felt like, like when we walked in there, I always felt like he was talking to me. And so I was on the edge of my seat and I was like listening to what he had to say. And I was really intrigued. And, and when he got done talking, I was like, no, because I can't read the book again until next Sunday. And I want to come back and I want to read more and I want to learn more and I want to understand what's going on. And so I was really, really intrigued by it. And I just kind of felt myself coming back for the next part of the sequel. And I'm like, wow, wait, who's David again? <laughs> and it, it was weird how that progression happened. And then one day, Dion was at home, and I, I went to church that morning, and Pastor Dan was up front, and he was kind of pacing back and forth, and he was in the middle of his sermon, and he said, I got to stop. He said, I want you all to know. He said, I just have this feeling in my heart. He said, there's somebody here that I feel like God is just reaching, reaching out and saying, come to me. Come up here. Come to me. I want to be in your life. I want you to open your heart to me. I want to be your savior, you know? Um, one of the songs that was on this morning that y'all did, Good, Good Father, that it's, it's really weird. It's not weird, but it is. It's like that means a lot to me um, because of my past and who God is for me. Um, he fills that gap for me, and I know that now. And that's, that's really tough for me because that's one of the things that I struggled with. Always, as I was becoming a Christian, God knew that I needed a good role model. He knew that I needed somebody smart that could answer my million questions and, and be willing to take more and be easy with me. And... So I'm sitting in my chair, and Pastor Dan's like, man, I just, I got to stop because I feel God is saying that I'm calling you up. And I'm like, I don't see anybody here getting up out of their chair, so it's going to be a while. <laughs> I get like this, like, that's you, Kyle. Like, get off me, man. <laughs> you better not touch me. I found myself physically holding on to the chair and like, I felt like Dennis the Menace, like locking my legs behind the legs of the chair. Like, you can't get me up there, you know? <laughs> if, if you're real, you're going to float me up to the front because I'm not getting up. And then I'm like, man, why am I walking? And then, and then I find myself down on my knees in front of the whole congregation. I'm the only person up there. And... I, that's when I gave my life to God because he knew what I needed. He was a good father. He provides, is, provides for me what I need. And those moments that I questioned him, he understood where I was coming from. He knew that I needed a little taste of logic, a little bit of an example. He knew that I needed good people around me that had patience and love. And he put something into my life that I never had before that I thought I was always going to miss out on. But really, it was just on the other side of having an open heart and an open mind, which was the joy of having God in your life. And I'm not ashamed to say that at all. I'm not always the greatest example of what we should be. You know, I'm a human being and, and I'll admit that. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry for those things. Sometimes I lose my temper. Sometimes I don't have the kindest words to say or or whatever the case may be, but God's still in my life. And the neat thing about this whole process is my purpose. Weird thing. Never knew what I wanted to do when I grew up. I still don't know what I want to do. <laughs> Haven't grown up yet, you know? <laughs> um, we used to go through sermons about, you know, the gifts and, you know, what your purpose is and things like that. And it, it explained a lot for me. Um, but I still had questions about who I was and what I wanted to do. You know, when I joined the Navy, I was just like, yeah, let's go. Where are we going? 
well, you got to figure out what you want to do first, kid. I'm like, ah, I just want to join the military. I'm like, no, I'm just going to point and shoot and go off across the world wherever, you know, wherever it takes me. It's like, no, you need a purpose. You need a plan, right? And God's got that plan, even though he doesn't show you the whole thing right away. Neat thing is that I found a passion for working with kids, you know, in, in our church in North Carolina. We, it's almost as if we stumbled into it. Uh, we made friends with the youth pastors, and they took us to this really neat thing called Acquire the Fire, if you've heard of it. I found myself in the middle of an arena with, I don't know, 50, 60,000 people. And out of nowhere, I just, way, way down there, I see this kid stand up and scream at the top of her lungs, Jesus, capture my heart. And I think that was like the first time that I was like, yes. Yes, that's what I'm, that's, that's what I'm feeling. But I was just, I was too skittish to ever say it, you know. And even then, I'm looking around, I'm like, <laughs> I'm not going to be that guy. And then more and more and more and more and more. And that flame, you know what happens when you light a match, right? You touch it to something, and everything else catches on fire. Well, then it was like it swooshed around this room, and you could feel the presence of God in there. And I was able to, for really the first time in my entire life, just let go of any fear of judgment let go of the fear of what, what is, what somebody else is watching or what they're going to say. And I was able to experience God in, in a new way. And I remember having my eyes closed and we were listening to worship and I felt the Lord. And it was really, it was what I needed. Maybe, I, I don't know. God came to me in a way that made me feel good about it all. I needed a hug. And he came to me and he wrapped me up. And that touched my heart. And we walked away from there. And I learned something that I, about myself that I never thought was, was even a thing, you know. I didn't know that I needed a, a good old spiritual hug from my father. And that's what it was. And, and I was on fire for that. And when we talk about passion and we talk about purpose, I'm on fire to come back here every Wednesday. I know that my wife bears the burden a lot of times. She comes up with these really cool lessons, and I'm like, yeah, that sounds cool. Let's do that, you know? But what I get excited about is, like, being there and seeing you guys learn and being kind of a tool to help you absorb some of that, you know? And hopefully, instead of not chasing you away, we help to bring you in. So my purpose right now may just be to simply be there. Uh, I'm willing and grateful for that opportunity to be able to do that. And that's a part of my story. And I just want to say thank you all for sitting and listening quietly. It's awesome. That's good. In, in, in finding God, uh, Kyle, Kyle found his purpose and, and became passionate about it, right? finally saw something through God's perspective. Thank you.